Hi there, I am Alimul Karim, uh, and in this video we will be discussing or be explaining uh, what a UK C Sharp Bootstrapper framework does. I mean the NuGet package. Uh, the idea behind this uh, C Sharp Bootstrapper is that it should it should give you the flexibility or some bootstrapping at the first of your project uh, creation. Let's say. So as the bootstrap name suggested that it helps you to do so much uh, without writing these tedious stuff. So it has a lot of uh, helpers actually. Just go with these helpers. It would um, save tons of your time. So here in this video, I will try to show some of the example as, uh, as it can come to my mind. Not all of these because it's a very long project and it can do so much more. But I think I will just give the pointers where it could help and where we could use it. So one of the examples could be paths. So if we work with .NET, the most of the common problem that comes with the long paths or probably uh, expanding the path or probably getting combining with the current directory where our project is deployed. Now, uh, w however way that you combine it, most of the time at this point when I'm recording this, we have the .NET 4.7.2, 4.8, I guess. Uh, still, you get the long path issues, but in the .NET Framework Core, you don't. So I'm not talking about .NET Core, but .NET Framework at this point. So there is a way to fix it. So it, it takes a long time if you try to fix it everywhere in your project. So this path helper helps you get those paths uh, with the long paths fix also. So you, you provide a path in here, you get the long path fixed. Also, there are a lot of these other uh, uh, functions like get the directory info, get the base path combining, expanding the path. Expanding the path means you could it could give a path uh, like this, uh, like this. This would mean that the development directory you could combine with some other variables also. Let's say I could say this is, uh, let's say, another uh, property. I could say property or I could, I could say something like this. Let's, let's assume that uh, this is a path where I am just putting these two curly braces and I'm saying that property name and then I'm saying something else now this path or probably I'm using some environment variable in here so all of these will be expanded uh, and giving me the right variable now this property name could be expanded using a model we could pass an object where uh, that property name actually exists in that um, uh, object and that will be compiled into the paths so this is one of the examples, but there are so much actually. There is this uh, combined path from base. So I could just give these related paths and it would use the directory separator and give me the path using the final uh, process. It would give me the long path fix as well, okay? Okay, so it will also have uh, the parallel task helper, which uh, helps to complete, um, let's say parallel functions uh, all at once. I mean, I mean, let's say I have uh, five actions, I mean, five methods, which does not depend on each other, but I need to complete those uh, all together. And when those four are done, I need to do something else. So in those cases, this parallel task helper could help. Uh, we, we could write it in C-sharp, but it's just so much code that we have to write. And with this approach, we could just give the actions here as you can see with some task name, it would log. If there is an exception, it would log using the uh, log for net. And by default, it also traces. If, if we do not, uh, let's say, configure the doc log for net, or uh, probably we, if we do not uh, add the uh, console. But even if there is an exception, it's going to console out and trace it if we do not configure the log for net. The, most of the use case here is the log helper which has most of the methods. Uh, so every time there is a exception using the methods that we use inside the framework, it actually logs using the log helper. And it has nice uh, logging attributes like we could do quick debug, we could do fatal exception, and so much more. 
and even we, we also have uh, the extensions with the uh, exception. Let me give an example here. Let's say I, I do throw an exception. Let's say I say hello world. Now about this uh, this exception, I could I could tap in and again say log, uh, and I could throw also if I want to throw my exception. It will also throw the uh, inner exception if I only needed to uh, throw the inner exception. Uh, and also there is this other overloads like I could throw only exception or I could throw the inner exception. So I could just tap into this. It it would. Uh, I will have the flexibility of writing a new message or additional message. I say empty right now. Let's say in the next part, I say is throw to true. I think this, this will work. Uh, we, we could also have other uh, exception issues like the path. So sometimes what happens, the exception that we have got is actually from a path. So it is better to also give the path information. So here two example is given. So when this exception is logged, it will also throw here. So let me run it very quickly. So it logged and if I open the uh, console here, see the two of the logs are here. Uh, now it didn't give me the line where the code actually began but it, it is available in the log trace but in case uh, if this does not help and we want to see where the exception is coming from then we could just do one more additional thing when the startup we could say that debug enable enable debug mode when we say this uh, it is not only takes the uh, the path error or the path that you can see the path is here so but also the line number explicitly where it is coming from not only the trace but also the line number where it is coming from so it is pretty explicit for the exception throwing catching up and handling all this short of uh, stuff uh, not only this not only exception or logging message or uh, things like that it also have a broad uh, common uh, identifier so in this common identifier we have like and as boolean uh, brackets uh, even the operators list where there we have equal operator and so much more so it is a full stack of framework where it has most of the common stuff that a developer need in c sharp okay uh, we could also work with URLs. Uh, there is this uh, API helper, which help us get to the data using uh, URL. So I could give, uh, sometimes what happens is that I have five different URLs. Either one of those that returns the first data is my, that's a primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, URL for the same data. Whatever is uh, actually, uh, the first one which gives the successful result, I'll take the result. So this is the one that I could use. I could also get multiple results uh, from the URLs. I could provide the multiple uh, URLs and also use the print uh, true false. If we do the print true false, using the log for net, it would log it into the file or if we do not log it, uh, I mean configure the log for net, by default it would give you the console and trace both if the error happens or anything happens or we enable the uh, log status. Uh, not only that, but uh, if we have, uh, let's say an object, let's say a list of, uh, list, let's say a string of list, and let's say we add some data. Something like this. We could also log this type of model class or anything using the log helper dot log model. Um, log model with state printer. There is this another plugin state printer. We have uh, added that. So it actually uh, gives two of the information, not only the um, the model itself, but also the state of the what kind of data that it has. So I could use this one for now let's say I give the message to null and let's say I provide the list 
if I run it, uh, it will give me two types of uh, result. The first one is that what type of uh, properties that the class has. So the list has these uh, uh, these properties, uh, which are easy to expand from the list. Um, it needs to have the public get actually. So uh, 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 without that, it, it couldn't get the data. So whichever it couldn't get, it also prints the exception or the issue. Uh, also, uh, it prints the data, what I have in the list. So there are a lot of methods using the log and the loop. And one of the favorite thing in the uh, framework is that it could do uh, sequential or the parallel loop uh, very easily with multiple threads and parallel processing. So let's say I uh, let let's do it like this. Let's say I I um, I run a loop. Let's say I run a loop, or probably let's say I do a for for each. And in this case, let's say I wanted to do fifty thousand to some number and then console print or probably I could do uh, like I could get a range of numbers uh, I could get uh, zero to let's say 500,000 or probably one digit more I got the numbers now I could do a loop in here and then print it out now let's assume that uh, this is a task and uh, I, I have to print this out it could be several indexes task or something like this if I run it it would go quickly but still if I open my processor it is hardly using 9% of my CPU, where my CPU is very powerful, most of those are idle. Now, how can I utilize it? I could use the .NET uh, parallel looping. I could do something like this. Zero to the number. So I is my index here, and I could do console dot right line in here. Let's do this. Still, if I open my uh, processor, it, it is taking uh, let's say ninety five uh, something like this. Um, what if I, I have some exception through the process or some hard things which takes more time then um, th this process actually uh, does not uh, proceed uh, to as the maximum uh, so the idea here is that we could actually use parallel dot I mean uh, there is this another framework function which is called sequence it actually runs in the page to page and the sequence and trust me this is much more faster what this cannot do in the regular process currently it's it's giving a very good number but uh, if I run it to run max something called run max and I could give uh, the range as a to list or to array let's do to array And then I could do some processing in here. I could say each number that I get, I also want to do a console.writeLine I. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, based on this parameter, if I capsule it out, it would actually uh, run much more faster. But uh, here I couldn't uh, show the point, but uh, in reality, if we have some complex task, it really outsmarts the this one actually. So it, it, it does so much more behind the scene.
and it's tested it, it works perfectly so here we have uh, 96.95 it, it's very fast actually even in terms of process and things like that it just goes with the number and uh, processes the large arrays okay so this is also one of the helpers there is also other helpers like the process helper this helps us to attach events with processes and do some common process like we could do uh, the, the give the file name and the uh, is admin or the arguments of the process and I will get a process but it will not run it would give the redirect symbols that it should redirect the outputs to uh, to to a console or, or the thing that I'm looking at so there, there is this redirect approach so when we enable the redirect we actually have to attach the loggers so there are some examples of the loggers how we can attach the data with it with the process and we can we can run it also so here we, we could uh, just create the process using this redirect method and then uh, at, give the process in here and give it a process name and then we could just wait for the process to run and it will attach whatever its outputs and give it to the current console that I'm seeing or whatever or wherever I want okay uh, this is also very helpful there is also uh, the the mutex helper which help which is very helpful for uh, mutex work so let's say I wanted to uh, read all bytes or read all lines using the mutex or uh, write to files using mutex or probably I want to do a function which will give me the result uh, using mutex uh, or probably I, I want to create a system wide mutex in here but if we create a mutex we need to close it also so that is the part of responsibility and when we use these functions it will actually take care of all uh, without thinking about the mutex context okay and there is also the file helper dot uh, we could append files safely and these are also long path fix so any path we give it here it will fix that long path issue and also perform like that uh, these are also safe so any logs it happens it should log using the log helper and then uh, give it give us the data as expected there is also another important one is the lazy getter and the action runner uh, it can be created from the action helper actually so action helper uh, has uh, these uh, these methods which can be very helpful so we could execute thread with time suppress thread exception uh, run things on thread very quickly uh, we could also have the lazy getter the lazy getter is one of the ideas like uh, we want to run some long process let's say this is a long process and I don't want to run it right now but later when the user wants to have the data at that point I need to run it or probably it creates some instance that instance is very costly it has like the, these number number generation probably user never uses it in his, in his or her application la lifetime so loading these at the at the state of the beginning is a very costly we don't need it so it, it works like dotnet lazy uh, under the hood is it uses the func so we actually put a func in here uh, func or delegate we could do something and uh, that will happen when we ask for the result we could say new int so in this case or, or I could say new int or something like this something like this so if you see this x x is actually a lazy of uh, uh, array so this will not work or probably I could just copy paste this data in here this data in here so this x actually uh, does not run this until we say so if we say that get me the value 
it will run on that instance or we could say value at once and, and in this case it will only run at once not multiple times let's do it like this in our function call let's do a console log it would make more sense let's do a console dot right line and do a date time dot now so each time we complete this we will print the date time dot now so let's say I get the values once let's say I get the values twice and the three times okay now I, I could print out any one of the data to uh, prove that uh, I have the data result uh, I could do the log helper dot uh, log with model something like this so value 3 will definitely have the data just to prove that so if you see that date is only run at once not more than that now uh, probably it didn't print that number let's do one more time here I, it's still printing the data because it's a large data so it is uh, trying to wrap it up and printing so let's wait for a moment to get it to the printer state so previously you have or we have seen that it takes a long time to print this number and uh, with the lock process it actually uses the very uh, less power to process the array or immutable types it does not use the uh, parallel but yeah uh, now we're getting the data somewhat so something we're, we're getting in here okay so it gives some of the idea that uh, we, we definitely get the result and it runs at once we could also do something like a binding I mean call a function uh, to recall it uh, let's say every few moment so we could say that run in seconds we could say one second this method would be recall and run for minus one means indefinite so if I give it five then it would only run for five five times uh, each one second delay so if I run it now this function will run so if I look at it Okay, so I was putting a breakpoint there, so that's why the debug got delayed. Let's run it once again. So you see, so each one of the time it's running, it's actually incrementing by one second, and now it's done. It is going to run only five seconds. I could also do some variable counting, like for index, which index it is. Let's say I could do plus plus here, and also print the index with it. I could do seven now so I will have zero index one index two index three index something like this it would call, call itself uh, by this time so every time whatever is written in here it will automatically run so it is a func it, it gives a result but sometimes we could only have the func uh, I mean the action which does not return any result in that case uh, we could we could actually create this data type by using the new dot lazy getter we could do the same stuff what we have done in here uh, we could use the type in here and use its uh, constructors also to do the same trick um, so we have another type called the action runner action runner is uh, similar to the lazy getter but uh, the idea here that we could give an action in here that means it does not return anything it just lets us do this console 
console log. That's it. That's its job. So this is the action that we have. Okay. And then we have a name. Let's say we could say the index runner. We could give it a name. In case the uh, exception throw, uh, any exception throw happen, this name will be helpful. <sighs> Let's see what happens. Okay, now these index, uh, we will have, let, let's create the index 2 here. It's two. They just you have both of the variables in a different place. And let's bind it. The same one, let's say I do it for two seconds now. Um, let's do it for 10. So here you see that it actually throws an exception. So this is where it throws the exception and cross it out. And now I could actually uh, wrap this exception in a try catch. Uh, let, let's just run one more time here. Uh, the idea here is that if exception happens, it should uh, take it out to show us that it happened to have an exception. Uh, we could suppress that exception, but the idea here is that uh, whenever the exception happens, it actually logs it using the log for net or the console or the trace, whatever you have enabled. So if I enable the log for net, it would log it into the file using nice logging. It is telling me which line it's coming from, uh, what is the index or whatever that it failed on running. Uh, so index, it, it by default, it also counts the index for where it fails actually. So how, what is the increment or the running time it actually failed? Let's uh, make it a bit more interesting. Let's make it if we have index 2 is greater than 3, then let's say we throw the exception, okay? Now the failing time, we are not saying uh, here that write it like this failing but we're just throwing it so at the moment it happens we'll see the exception also the uh, index number where it happened and also the exception details okay it also catches the uh, inner exception if we have a new inner exception it takes all the details from the exception I come up here see that inner exception is also got caught and this is my hello world this is my inner exception that's it okay so th these are uh, the action runner we have seen the lazy we have enum helper common identifier we also have the string helper which is also very helpful uh, we have a bunch of uh, string helping function, like we could have uh, create a string based on some condition. Let's say I have a true false condition based on that I'm going to join the string or not. Uh, I could have params of a string, I could have uh, func of the strings. So I could, I could give uh, a lot of, uh, I could give a predicate of function here. And uh, if that function returns, uh, true for these list of string that I give, then it would be combined or else it will not. The first Boolean is the first one that if this is false, none of these will uh, proceed. If this first condition is true, let's say, then joiner will uh, join these strings only if for each one of these strings, if this predicate given is true, okay? So it will also have the XML conversion of if we give uh, anything to string, it would give uh, XML summary. Uh, it would create the uh, the right bracket. If we give the left bracket, it would give me the right bracket. Um, if we use the substring functions, there are a lot of substring functions, get from last, get from fast, 
we could uh, give a source we could find from first what we want to find and then we could do a before or after to get the substring i mean substring only takes the number but it it encapsulates that and searches the the idea of the substring that you first search for something and then based on the finding we actually want to get the substring so it's the compilation of the substring uh, and the, uh, the other code is the similar idea, like if we get a single code, it will give me the, the other code. If we get the double code, it would give me the double code, the other code. The other code, I, I think it would give uh, the single code given the double code. Okay, it would give me the different uh, code of the given one. If I give the single one, it would give me the uh double if i give the double it would give me the single one uh there is this other two xml parameters on wrap string with quotes wrap string and wrap string and so much more with double quotation and much more okay so this is with the string helper we have seen the process helper we have seen the mutex helper um log helper which is the most useful one api helper parallel task helper uh, most of those we have seen other than that what we have in the data types is that we have a common result type it is mostly useful if or, or probably helpful if i start with the file helper dot create i think okay i think it's in the directory helper one of the example no um, the idea here is that we have uh, something called the um, new common result something uh, common validate result so here what we could do is that this type is very helpful sometimes what happens is that we are writing a function and we don't only want to return one type but multiple of the types so in that case what happens is that we used to write the out parameters or something uh, some data type in in this uh, return type let's say a model that is going to be returned so we, we do this extra stuff or probably a tuple that is being returned but in most cases what we want in a result is three things let's say a log what happened the result is it uh, valid or not and the result data that is coming from so these uh, common validate result actually wraps up everything. So let's say if I wanted to send a result of the Boolean type. So the result here is the Boolean type right now. And the valid, I could say that it is true, means valid result I found and return also true. Or I could make it a string to make it more uh, believable. I could say success is the result that I was looking for. Or I could say false, and then I could say failed. These are the results I could do with return. So I don't need to create the type only for uh, these few things. I could always use the common validate result uh, as output type, and that would take care of all of these. I'll take the data. Uh, I could do this var dot x, and I could say if x is valid, or I could I could do this is. Uh, present and valid that means that uh, the the return result is not null and also is valid then do this stuff something like this we could also do um, if any number or anything that comes if it is string we could say is empty spaces that is more readable than string dot whatever 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 uh, and we could also say any object if it is an object any object dot we could say is present okay i could say x2 is present that means not null actually not null is the negative words uh, gets confusing in the brain brain so you could say just is present that makes more sense more readable that means the not null checking actually so if you want to check null 
you do the null checking, I don't have any function for that because it is still the uh, affirmative that you are checking. As long as you are checking affirmative, uh, it's good. If null, you do this. If not null, not is uh, sometimes confusing. So the better part is to extrude that is present. And for this uh, type of data type, we should use the is present and valid. Then we do this stuff. That means the result we got is definitely ought to deal with. We could do x2 dot result and do other stuff. Okay. Uh, there is also so much more like uh, injecting left hand to right hand. Like uh, most of the time what happens is that we got x is one data where uh, we have the x2 dot one parameter is something from w2 dot another parameter. We are left and right hand uh, data transforming. Uh, it, this is very much tedious. For this there are a couple of frameworks like AutoFAC or other mapping frameworks that you could use. but. Uh, with this, still with the um, AutoFact, you need to create another uh, profiler to make it happen. Or still, you have to map it. But what if you have the same naming and same data type, and you want to directly cast it uh, and to have the result? How can you do that? You could actually do it using this uh, framework. There, there is this method called the uh, safe cast, to safe cast. So, safe cast what it does is that if it is um, a, let's say a base variable if i tap it in i, I will see that i could give the um, to save instant and uh, not this to save inject i think um safe yeah safe cast and create so we have these two types in here. One is the derived instance. Another is the uh, parameters that we want to create. So uh, here, uh, the, the first one that I'm tapping in, it would create um, a derived type. Based on the derived type I put in here, I could say common validate dot string again. So let's say it would create that data type let, let's do an example. It would make more sense. Let's let's create two data types. Let's a person one. For the models, it just do the best work. So uh, let's say I have string. That's a first name, and that's it. For the person one, I have the first name, and let's say I have uh, person two which have the first name and last name I could say first name in here last name and let's say this one has a date of birth prop DOV for now which is the wrong naming convention so let's say both of those has the DOB field, but this is uh, something uh, int and this is in date time. So let's say I give it a date time dot now as a default value. Now, uh, the whole idea here is that I will create a person to object, person, and that's it. I will have the, uh, the, the first time that, uh, let me log the, both of the data types in here. could say person two I could print person two and person one and then I could also print person two and person one okay it will make more sense so when I created the object the person one has the first name in DOB uh, when I created the uh, for um, the person two um, the first time actually this is the first time see so person one it has the first name person two has these uh, anti null and so on um, and then again when i uh, printed it actually i have the uh, person two uh, person two is 
Okay, person two is printed twice to uh, both of the state. One is the state printer, another is the property model printer. So two times it's printed. So the second time I have the safe inject and then I have the similar name as the same values you see. So here I, I got the first name. The last name is null still because it's not there. And DOB still contains zero because uh, the data type does not match. So this is how the safe inject will work. Thank you all for watching it.